Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. In this episode, I am gonna teach myself how to make a bowl out of this random bit of timber that I've had laying around for years. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually quite worried about this, but um, let's get straight into it. Bowl turning is one of those things that, again, I've seen so many demonstrations of over the years, but never had a go doing so myself. Never even touched a bowl gouge in my life or done any sort of face turning at all. This is completely new to me. Even when it comes down to mounting things on a chuck, the first thing that I mounted on a chuck was the pen blank you saw me drill last week. So firstly, I am going to attach a face plate to the front of the bowl blank here, which will hold it on the lathe while I turn the underside of the bowl. And on a side note, I'm aware that there's a few subscribers, or should I say new subscribers, as a result of this series. So hello if you're new here. It's great to have you on board with this journey. And if this is the first of my videos that you're watching, just be aware that this is by no means at all a tutorial series. Half the time I've got no idea what I'm doing. This is purely me learning wood turning from scratch. Things will go wrong and I'm pretty sure it will be quite funny. So um, yeah, make sure to stick around for the ride. It should be interesting. And then that will go onto the lathe. Ooh, it all feels very real now. So I'll take this chobby off because we don't need it. I'm not doing spindle turning today. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is true up the outside of this bowl. And it's fortunate I've been watching videos on this because I probably would have ended up trying to do this with a roughing gouge, which is perfectly fine for spindle turning. But with bowl turning, because the grain is now going, well, if I put it like this, grain's now going towards me as opposed to this way, I'm cutting into end grain like that, which means it's gonna catch as it gets about there because I'm now cutting against the grain, then you're cutting with the grain, then you're cutting end grain, then you're cutting against it, then you're cutting with it, then you're cutting along end grain again. It's all over the place. And a roughing gouge cannot do that because it just ends up catching and ripping out the grain. So you need to use a bowl gouge for this. So let's get the old face shield on and we'll get truing this up. Okay, so it's all round on the outside. Um, what I'm getting with this, which I've had quite a lot of issues with in everything else I've been doing, is that when I've been turning, it's kind of felt really bouncy on there. Uh, even though this is perfectly round, it feels like either the tool or the wood is just bouncing away. It doesn't really feel like, well, I'm not taking off that much material. So if anyone has any pointers on that, that would be amazing. I'll show you what I mean now in normal speed. It's pretty minging, to be honest, and I don't know what it is. Oh, Lord. Yeah, look, it's just like bouncing the tool off. Now, bear in mind that this wood is very dry. It's very hard. I'm aware that standard practice when you're roughing out bowls is to do it while it's green. Not that you need to do that, but it's certainly an easier way of doing it. Is that why this is happening? I don't know. Um, right, I'm going to start turning the sweep on the bottom now. I've seen a few different ways of this being done. saw some videos where it's done by doing a like a push cut around the corner and I've seen some where you pull it around the bottom of the bowl instead. Um, I am just going to try both and see what works.
Okay, I've got the bottom looking pretty good. I ended up using the heavy duty scraper for this. That was so nice to use. The shavings flying off of this thing, easily the most satisfying thing I've done thus far in this series. So now I need to turn the like recess in the bottom of the bowl in order to put the jaws in there to expand and grip it in place. Uh, I'm gonna be turning a dovetail section in there. So I'm gonna rough it out with the bowl gouge and then I'll turn the dovetail with a skew chisel. Now I'm gonna get it sanded all over, then we'll flip it round, chuck it in the dovetail chuck, and then we'll start hollowing out the center. Right, the outside is all sanded to 400 grit and feels amazing. So we obviously need to take this off the chuck now and start hollowing out the center, hopefully without blowing through and splitting the whole bowl in half. I can see why this is so annoying now because you spend so much time getting this bottom right only to completely destroy it later on. On goes the chuck. Make sure this is nice and clean so that the jaws sit flat on there. And each of these thingies, inserts, are numbered and so are the dovetail jaws. So this helps keep everything um, true if I was hoping to remount this bowl blank on later on. <laughs> right, <laughs> the dovetail jaws do not compress small enough to fit in there. Frickin' idiot. You absolute. I knew things were going far too well. Right, so we're going to start hollowing this out now. Um, I am going to try and get the walls thin on this. I know seeing as this is the first time I'm doing this, I should probably just try and get a bowl out of it for my own peace of mind. But this series is about challenging myself and I'm more than happy about throwing myself in the deep end, even if it fails, because at least it was a good challenge. So I'm not, I'm not saying like paper thin here. I've seen some of these walls and bowls get really, really thin. I'm not going for that, but I want it to look like reasonably thin. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm fairly confident. I mean, I think around here, that's about five millimeters. And then it, it's probably tapering to around seven or eight there, but I can't follow that curve the entire way around because there's obviously a mortise in the bottom of this that I need to allow for, but I'm pretty close there, I think. The only thing I did forget to do was clean up the rim before I hollowed out this center. So now this is, like, if I need to clean that up, I've got to be very, very gentle with it because that's going to be pretty fragile, especially on these end grain bits here, that you can see the rough marks there. Um, I am gonna try and do that probably with a uh, scraper. Yeah, I'll try it with a scraper. Literally just knock the corners off and then sort the rest out with sandpaper, I think. Uh, and then we'll start sanding the rest of it and see what it looks like. Right, let's get it sanded. Now 
And to finish this, I'm just gonna use Osmo. It's my go-to finish for pretty much all my furniture and projects and things because it's really easy to apply. It's food safe, it's natural, it's easy to maintain. I just use it for everything. And if you want to know how I apply this stuff, have a look at my link in the top corner. And there we go. There is the finished bowl. You know what I said at the start of this series about not feeling fulfilled when I do woodworking projects anymore? This has done it because I came into this expecting to get all sorts of kickback with that gouge. I thought this thing would blow up on the lathe. I really didn't expect it to go this well. And considering it's my first bowl, I'm really happy with it, especially the proportions. I really took time to get that right. A lot of the times I've seen bowls when they're made and they kind of they haven't been rounded properly and they still got that sort of square bowl blank look. They look like dog food bowls. And I've really tried to get nice proportions on this. I think that's what's doing it for me with this and the fact I've got a relatively thin wall on it. Um, yeah, very successful episode. Better than last week with that blimmin' pen. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you have any suggestions, especially about that rattling tool that I was getting, if you've got any suggestions or pointers on videos I should watch on how to reduce that, please drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.